All right, so among making a million other pickups today, we wound like 10 pickups today. Uh, one of the things I did finish, I just remember when I said that I wound the wrong bobbins for the 40,000 subscriber giveaway guitar. So boom, here we have a humbucker size P90 uh, ready to go in the bridge position of this thing. So I think tomorrow, we will go ahead and get the kind of the final layout and a little bit of a dry run of what that thing is finally gonna look like. We'll put the pickups in it, uh, this other pickup in it. Uh, we'll lay out the wiring. We'll see what happens. Uh, right now though, uh, one of the things I did promise you as well is that broadcaster telly. Um, I'm gonna show you how to put a paper and oil cap in that thing without ruining it. Okay, so if you'll recall, we had this Fender Telecaster uh, 70th anniversary broadcaster um, that came from my buddy in Florida. Trogli's guitar originally had it. Um, we'll link up the video. And we put the broadcaster circuit in it where it had originally, it came with the just normal three-way tele. As part of the 50s reissue deal, it came with this uh, paper and oil capacitor. And it has these wax ends. And when you overheat these, they fall apart. So today we're gonna try to install this without damaging these wax ends because it'll just fall apart in your hands if it's done incorrectly. So I'll show you. So I'll show you how to do this without ruining anything. Um, what I typically do on this kind of stuff is, first of all, never use it because it's a pain. Second of all, if we do have to use it, take an alligator clip and put that alligator clip right here right close to the tip of it we're going to solder on this side and what hopefully will happen is this will heat this will act as a heat sink so that most of the heat doesn't transfer through to the hot part or to the part that could be damaged in the capacitor and then the other thing we're going to do to mitigate this issue is we're going to preheat the solder so that it is all the way hot and we're gonna add some so we have a nice pool of solder going before we add this leg boom see I it was just a touch I didn't have to do anything and the solder the, the leg of the, the cap didn't have to get super hot so now We'll do the same thing. Little rubber boots making it hard. Yeah, see, and this is hot. Like I can feel it. So it it soaked up the the additional heat. So we'll position here something like so. The other end of that cap's gotta go right there. So we'll put this here. One thing I didn't mention earlier, here, let me do this first. Let me concentrate on this first. So get this hot. Yeah, see the solder legs really, really hot. And this has got some heat in it, but we, we saved the end of the capacitor. Boom. So now we have the proper capacitor reinstalled in this guitar without doing damage to it. Cut off the excess lead and it is as easy and simple as that. If you also notice, I used a towel going all the way around this. Sometimes with the nitrocellulose finish, well, all the time with the nitrocellulose finish, you gotta worry about it a little bit more because when the flux in the solder spatters a little bit, it can burn the finish. So I always put a towel 
all the way around um, and nitro is more susceptible to it. Just go ahead and just chuck this thing back together with its 1950s style flat screws. We will be in Florida this weekend and this guitar will go back to its owner. All right, let's finish this video out by going over some comments. Uh, a couple of questions that came up after the last video, the last couple videos, which were actually kind of interesting. The first one, my impression with avoiding ground loops in a guitar wasn't in terms of the completely proper use of the term, but actually avoiding making a loop shape with your ground. The idea being that you're making a single turn of a coil with the ground wire that could make it more likely to pick up extra electromagnetic interference. Good question. One, one loop isn't gonna matter. We're gonna get into this in a little bit more with another question that came up that's kind of related. Um, don't overthink it. Just ground everything correctly. Make sure it's soldered correctly. You're not gonna make an antenna in wires this long. Um, if you think about like an AM antenna, for example, it is a predetermined tuned amount of wire and it's usually about this big and it's got, you know, 15 or 18 or 21 or I can't remember how many turns, but on an, a on an AM radio, if you know that, uh, or if you have one of those things in a drawer somewhere, take it apart, see how many wraps around it there are, how big the coil wire is and how long that run actually is. It's way longer than the six or eight inches in your guitar. Hey Dylan, how would you explain the best way of installing a kill switch, uh, avoiding ground loops? Again, no need to worry about it, but there is a good way to do a kill switch. Um, a lot of people think that to do a kill switch, you would actually open the connection, but what you actually do is ground it. So uh, take the hot output that goes to your jack, put a switch there that actually shorts your hot output to ground. If you break it and reconnect it, it'll make a popping noise. If you just short it to ground, it'll be a lot quieter when it shorts to ground and kills your signal. That's the way I would do it. Momentary switch, you know, bucket head style. Uh -huh. Did you get that Telecaster control plate soldering fixture from Stumac? No, I literally just took a piece of wood that I had laying in my garage when I had a garage and I drilled some holes in it and made it into a fixture and it works awesome i use it all the time it works killer okay so this is a re related question to the last question we just had there's a rumor that there is some benefit to twisting wires and that it is something they used to do before there was shielded wire there's a minimum number of twists per inch to get the benefit which i can't remember but the one wire twisted around the other is said to behave as a shield that could potentially cancel some hum. Probably no noticeable benefit in a shielded control cavity, but on some guitars. Okay, we get this question a lot actually. Twisted pairs come from telephone lines. That's where the whole twisted pair idea comes from. And this is another situation where just because it's in one technology doesn't mean it applies the same to the other technology being guitars. Um, the way a twisted pair works is you have two wires that are twisted around each other and he is correct. I can't remember what the rate per inch is. If you know that, put it in the comments because I can't remember what it is. I didn't go and look it up. It's not super important um, for our conversation. But that twisted pair um, goes around each other um, and it does cancel electromagnetic interference, uh, line interference. The difference is that those twisted pairs are balanced signal, okay? Like a microphone cable, where you have two matching signals. So there's a voltage in this wire, there's a voltage in this wire, and they are sent down the line at the same time, out of phase from each other, and then they're wrapped around each other. That is called a balanced line. So if you ever, here unbalanced and balanced. So guitar is not balanced. So uh, in again, in the six inch run that goes from your volume pot to your output jack, twisting those wires doesn't really do anything 
because A, it's not a balanced signal, so you don't have that phase reversal to do the phase cancellation anyway. And B, because it's such a short run that you're never going to hear that difference. Now, if you had to go all the way from, you know, London to Paris, yes, it's going to make a difference. It also depends on the kind of voltage and the kind of information that you're trying to transmit. Um, if it's data, for example, like in a Cat5 cable, like internet cable, it's very important because you can have even a little bit of loss will screw up your throughput. So it'll end up killing the bandwidth, killing the speed, killing everything. But when we're talking about an AC voltage in an unbalanced line, that's the important part. In the output jack of a guitar, it doesn't really matter. Um, and there will be people who will argue and argue and argue, well, I put it in there and it made it quieter. The thing that's interesting about shielding and grounding is it can be a collective of problems. So if you, and, and many times we don't solve problems one little thing at a time. If my guitar is noisy, I put shielding everywhere and I do all these things and I make all these changes at once and then the problem is fixed. Um, so to parse it all out like that and say each little thing is making a difference, it's not that big a deal. It's just all of that stuff put together makes an improvement. So then everybody thinks, well, if I don't twist this together, it's not going to be quiet enough. There you go. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I know the video was late today. Really busy. <laughs> doing a lot of stuff we are uh it's raining now uh which is slowing everything down that we're trying to do so anyway thanks for hanging out uh make sure you go to dylancontest.com to enter to, to win the 40,000 subscriber giveaway guitar hopefully tomorrow we'll have some more specific content about that particular guitar and then make sure you check out patreon.com slash dylan talks tone for the nut class that we're going to do this coming sunday night it's going to be really really good and I'm going to put some content probably on Patreon tomorrow for those of you that have signed up uh, to give you some, a little pre-roll of what's going on Sunday night so you all are ready. Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you tomorrow.